In this last video, we're going to discuss the parasympathetic nervous system of the autonomic nervous system. This is the last video on the autonomic nervous system. So, the parasympathetic nervous system, what is that? So, the parasympathetic nervous system comprises a cranial portion emanating from the brainstem and the sacral portion that originates from the intermediate gray zone of the sacral spinal cord. The parasympathetic division is more localized in its firing fashion than the sympathetic nervous system. So there's a less tendency for divergence. And remember what divergence is. If you have a preganglionic cell here in the autonomic nervous system, it diverges it diverges the signal onto you know one, five, ten, uh, more than a hundred in the sympathetic nervous system to the postganglionic cell. So that this preganglionic cell, when it's triggered, an electrical impulse comes down this axon here, releases these neurotransmitters into this space here. They all fire and continue on down the line. As a little quiz, do you remember what this neurotransmitter is here and what receptor? Well, because this is preganglionic to a postganglionic cell, this is acetylcholine is the neurotransmitter and the receptor is nicotinic. Nicotinic. And that's on the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system. And so on the parasympathetic nervous system, there's only maybe 15 to 20 postsynaptic connections or post or postganglionic nerves neurons to one preganglionic nerve neuron. So an example of this is let's use the vagus nerve. So one portion of its outflow can be activated of the vagus nerve can be activated to slow the heart rate. Well, if this two, if let's say these two were to the heart, and let's say these two were to the stomach, and you didn't want, you wouldn't want to fire this one because then that would slow the heart rate down and it would alter the function of the stomach. So that's why there's less of divergence in the parasympathetic nervous system compared to the sympathetic nervous system. And the ganglia in the parasympathetic division are located close to the organ that's going to be innervated, innervated or embedded within the walls. So they these po these parasympathetic preganglionic neurons have very long axons, and the postganglionic have short. And so some teachers like to quiz about that. So the brain stem of the parasympathetic neurons innervate structures in the head, chest, and abdomen, and that is the cranial portion of the parasympathetic nervous system. So we've already seen this picture several times if you've been watching the last few videos. So cranial nerve number three, number seven, number nine, and number ten, they innervate all the head, chest, and abdomen structures, the majority of them, and then the sacral portion of the parasympathetic innervate the lower portion. So we'll talk about each one. So the cranial nerve number three is the oculomotor nerve. It originates from nuclei in the tectum of the midbrain. So we're going to talk about kind of the wordy description and then we'll go through some pictures and describe each one. So in the tectum, tectum of the midbrain where synaptic connections of the axons of the optic nerves provide input for ocular reflexes. So this is important. So cranial nerve number two duh, is the optic nerve and as light comes through the eye it hits on these receptors back here and that information is taken to the brain. This is input. Okay and what happens is some of these connect right up to this nucleus in the cranial nerve number three nucleus so you can have reflexes because you don't want the reflexes to have to go through all the synapses up in the brain and they come back down they just kind of synapse right along there and so if you shine light in someone's eyes the reflex you don't have to think about that your reflex would just boom 
and and it will close down the pupil. It'll shut it down. Or if light turns off, then you know you'll get uh, your dilation of the pupil. So those are kind of those reflexes there. And so the preganglionic parasympathetic neurons originate in the Edinger Westfall nucleus. And the presynaptic axons travel in the superficial as aspect of the cranial nerve number three. So as these the cell bodies of the preganglionic parasympathetic cranial nerve number three neurons they travel on, they originate here in the Edinger Westphal nucleus, and they travel on the superficial aspect of cranial number three until they get to this ciliary ganglion located inside the orbit. And so that's where the synapse occurs and the postganglionic post axons enter the eyeball near the optic nerve and travel between the sclera and the choroid. So they kind of travel in here, in there, and these ax these axons supply sphincter muscle to the iris, the ciliary muscle which affects the lens, which you know, which focuses the lens and the choroidal blood vessel. About 90% of the axons are destined to the ciliary muscle and only 3 to 4% innervate the iris sphincter. So here is the midbrain right here. So right here at the level of the superior colliculus, right here on the tentorum part of the midbrain is where those Edinger Westfall nucleus lie. And then once they come out, you can kind of see right here in this picture that's kind of where they're located at. And then they come out here above the pons. And then they go on down the nerve to the ciliary ganglion. If we go over here to Netter and look at what he says right here in the tentorum part of the midbrain you have the uh, Edengar Westphal nucleus and the fibers come down the ocular motor nerve number three they come down they enter the orbit they come down and then they synapse here on the ciliary ganglion. Right here, the ciliary ganglion. And then they come down and they innervate the iris. And here is the ciliary. Here's the lens and the ciliary muscles here. And you can kind of see the innervation there and the iris here. And here's another shot of the superior colliculus. And at the level of the superior colliculus, you have the Edinger Westphal nucleus parasympathetic and they come down and they travel in between the sclera and choroid here innervating these these structures here. Next we have cranial nerve number seven it was, which is the facial nerve sits right here and the preganglionic cell bodies are located in the superior salivatory nuclei of in the rostral medulla. Rostral means kind of towards the top or towards the nose. And so the presynaptic axons pass from the facial nerve into the greater superficial petrosal nerve. So this is the greater superficial petrosal nerve here. And then they synapse on the post parasympathetic ganglia or uh, ner neuron in the pterygopalatine ganglion which is here and then those postsynaptic axons from that ganglion innervate the lacrimal gland and innervate glands in the nasal and in the palatal mucosa and to kind of give secretion there so half so some of the fibers i'm not sure if it's exactly 50% but some of the fibers go up here to the pterygopalatine ganglion to inner innervate the lacrimal gland and the nasal and palatal mucosa and others they kind of go towards the submandibular and sublingual glands via the corda tympani nerve and they synapse in the submandibular ganglion which is which is right here and these postsynaptic axons they stimulate the submandibular and the sublingual glands now parasympathetic acti activation can also in the cranial nerve number 7 the facial nerve cause dilation of the vasculature 
within the area supplied by the facial nerve, which is pretty interesting. So if we were to look at the superior salivatory nucleus where cranial nerve number seven preganglionic parasympathetic fibers originate from, they, the cell bodies originate right here, and some of the fibers go through here, which is the greater petrosal nerve right here, and they come down, they come down, they turn into the nerve of the pterygoid canal, and then they synapse here at the pterygopalatine ganglion. Now that they synapse with the second neuron, the postganglionic parasympathetic neuron, this one comes up to the lacrimal gland, innervates the lacrimal gland, and some also innervate the nasal mucosa and the palatine mucosa here. All the blue dotted ones are postganglionic parasympathetic neurons is the blue dotted ones. Again, then the other half, they kind of sp come down, split off, and they go through the corda tympani nerve, and they travel down here, and then they keep coming down, and then they synapse in the submandibular ganglion and the sublingual ganglion, and they innervate these, these glands here, the sublingual gland and the submandibular gland. If you were to guess what kind of neurotransmitter and what type of receptor is in this synapse, what would you guess? I hope you guessed acetylcholine and nicotinic, and if you were to guess the neurotransmitter and the receptor at this synapse, what would you guess? I hope you guessed acetylcholine as the neurotransmitter and muscarinic as the receptor. Now let's move on to cranial nerve number nine. Cranial nerve number nine, the glossopharyngeal nerve. It arises from the inferior salivatory nuclei of the medulla instead of the superior like cranial nerve number seven. And the axons course through the lesser petrosal nerve to reach the otic ganglion and that's where they synapse right here is in the otic ganglion and from the otic ganglion, ganglion the postsynaptic or the postganglionic parasympathetic neurons they join up with the auricular temporal branch of cranial nerve number five and that's how they get to the parotid gland where they stimulate secretion of saliva so here we have the inferior salivatory nucleus of the medulla is where cranial nerve number nine cell bodies are of the preganglionic parasympathetic neuron. They come down the glossopharyngeal nerve and then they hit this inferior ganglion. They do not synapse. Then they head north or up tympanic nerve through the tympanic plexus and then they go through the lesser petrosal nerve where they run into the otic ganglion. Here they synapse acetylcholine and nicotinic. Acetylcholine is the neurotransmitter, nicotinic is the receptor. Yeah, you have to know that for pharmacology. Then they pair up with mandibular nerve V3, the third division of the trigeminal nerve and that's how they go into the and then some of them kind of come up through this auricular temporal nerve and that's how they reach the parotid gland and innervate the parotid gland. Last but not least of the cranial or brainstem part of the parasympathetic division is the cranial nerve number 10, the vagus nerve. It has an extensive autonomic component so you look at what the 3, 7, and 9 do, kind of smaller compared to what 10 does. Heart, trachea, lungs, liver, gallbladder, stomach, small intestine, uh, kidneys, top of the large intestine. Cranial nerve number 10 does a lot. So it's estimated that 75% of the total parasympathetic activity is vagal output. Oh, I forgot to tell you where they arise from. They, uh, the pre-ganglionic parasympathetic neuron cell bodies are located in the nucleus ambiguous and the dorsal motor nuclei, nuclei of the medulla. 
They have long preganglionic axons that travel in the vagal trunks to the ganglion in the heart and lungs and to the intrinsic plexuses of the GI tract. So the right vagus nerve supplies axons to the SA node of the heart or the sinoatrial node of the heart. The left vagus nerve supplies innervation to the AV node or the atrioventricular node. And so vagal activation, what it does is it slows the heart rate down and reduces the force of contraction. If you are not in a fight or flight response mode, you don't need so much heart activity. So the vagal efferents to the lung, they control smooth muscle of the bronchioles and when they're activated they constrict and they also regulate the action of the secretory cells so how much mucus you kinda have and vagal output of the esophagus and stomach regulates motility and influences the secretory function of the stomach so here we have a picture of the posterior nucleus of the vagus nerve and this is where those cell bodies lie right here then it comes down the vagus nerve exit the skull through the jugular foramen and you have the superior ganglion of the vagus nerve here and you have the inferior ganglion of the vagus nerve but they do not synapse there they keep going and going and then they have uh, branches up here and they have the superior cervical cardiac branch of the vagus nerve, the inferior cervical cardiac branch of the vagus nerve, the thoracic cardial branch of the vagus nerve, they have the pulmonary plexus, and so on. The vagus nerve does a lot and it innervates the heart, innervates the liver, the stomach, the small intestine, and the first half of the large intestine. Now we move to the sacral part of the parasympathetic neurons. And so right here through segments S2, 3, and 4 is where the parasympathetic system lies, these neurons lie. And so they originate from the intermediate gray matter of the sacral spinal cord. And we already talked about that. They come from the S2, S3, S4 sacral nerves. And these preganglionic fibers synapse at in ganglia in or near the pelvic organs like we've already discussed and what they do is they innervate the lower portion of the GI tract namely the sigmoid colon the rectum and the internal anal, anal sphincter so you do not have control over your internal anal sphincter but you do have control over your external anal sphincter and it also innervates the urinary bladder and the reproductive organs. So that's it for the parasympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system. We'll see you in the next video.